What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Canadian Football Fantasy Fix for Week 5 of the 2021 CFL season. I'm Ryan Coop here with your uh, first depth chart update of Week number 5 on this Friday. As the week kicks off tonight, first game on the schedule with the Montreal Alouettes and the Ottawa Red Blacks taking place this evening. So you're going to need to start getting your lineup set and... Well, with it being the Labor Day long weekend, uh, it's a bit of a tricky uh, waters to navigate here because you've got tonight's game that we have depth charts out for, uh, but that's the only one we have at this point. We'll get depth charts for Sunday's game between the Bombers and Riders uh, on Saturday, and then the Monday doubleheader we will get on Sunday. So... Uh, you know, a bit of an interesting dynamic there. If you're taking, you know, some players from the Alouettes or the Red Blacks tonight uh, without knowing who's going to be playing in those other games, you could get yourself in a situation where you, you're kind of heavy-handed when it comes to the salary cap situation uh, later on in the week. Uh, so just be cautious in that regard. But uh, let's take a look at the depth charts for this game, and then we'll go through the injury reports for the other teams uh, playing later this week and see if there's anything notable to come out of those as well. Uh, like I mentioned, Montreal, Ottawa. Uh, let's start with the Red Blacks here. I'm pull that up in front of me just to have a look at. Um, Matt Nichols gets to start once again for the Red Blacks with Dominic Davis as the backup, so Ottawa's sticking with Matt Nichols at quarterback. Uh, Timothy Flanders still out with an injury this week, so Justin Davis will get another start at running back. Uh, he had himself uh, not too bad of a day at the cheap price point last week. Uh, at wide receiver, R.J. Harris, uh, Ryan Davis, great value pick there. Uh, Nate Bahar, Daniel Peterman, and finally, finally, Devontae Dedman starting at wide receiver for the Red Blacks. This has been something you've heard me over the past four, five weeks talking about uh, great value as a returner. And if you could only get him in the starting offense as well, uh, that would be a great, great thing for his fantasy value. So, you know, coming into the week, uh, before we got these depth charts, I had Dedman in the yellow light category. To me now, he moves up into the green light. I think he's got enough talent just in the return game to get you a, a decent floor of, you know, five points or so there. Uh, a couple plays in the offense uh, as well, uh, his direction. He has the speed to break a game open. I could see a big day for Deadman now that he's finally getting into that Ottawa offense. So I'm super excited to see how he performs. And as of right now, I, I tell you, I have him in my lineup for this week. Uh, th that's the notables. Those are notable starters on offense. I don't believe anything's changed on the offensive line uh, for the Red Blacks this week, uh, and defensively as well. Uh, looks like a lot of the same crew as last week is back again. No Sherrod Baltimore, no Abdul Kane still for the Red Blacks as they are on the uh, six-game injured list. Uh, no Anthony Coombs this week. He's out with a hamstring. I don't believe he's gotten into any uh, meaningful game action quite yet. Uh, also, Kenya, Kene Anyeka uh, on the defensive line out. Uh, long snapper LP Burasa out. Uh, wide receiver Sharon Peak, who got a start last week, uh, I believe, uh, is out this week, which perhaps that mean is why... We see uh, Devontae Deadman in the lineup and uh, also Stephen Charles uh, on the defensive line is out. And Justin Howell, as mentioned on the depth chart, is questionable at halfback. So maybe even losing another piece in the defensive backfield. That's what it looks like for the Red Black. So let's switch over and look at Montreal here. Um, for the Alouettes, trying to get their offense back on track a little bit. Uh, Vernon Adams Jr. at the helm at quarterback yet again. Uh, William Stanback at running back yet again. And uh, a wide receiver, Eugene Lewis, B.J. Cunningham, Jake Weineke, and Kayon Julian Grant are the mainstays from the past couple of weeks. But uh, Quan Bray on the injured list, uh, the one-game injured list, he will not suit up for this game, which means Dante Absher gets his first start of the year at wide receiver. So uh, a potential value play may be there, uh, but I do like a lot of the other value plays around the league more, and uh, no Quan Bray means his, his couple targets could be going 
more so to the guys like Lewis, Cunningham, and Wynicki, and perhaps boosts their value a little bit there. Uh, Mario Alford returning as the kick returner for another week. Um, and then on the defense, uh, the notable change there on the defensive line, Antonio Simmons to the injured list. Uh, Jamal Davis the second comes off the practice roster uh, to start at defensive end uh, alongside Armando Sewell, Woody Barron, and Nick Usher. So uh, losing a big piece there on the defensive line. Uh, We'll see how Davis II comes in and performs there alongside that great crew of pass rushers that the Alouettes have. So those are the notables for them. also, uh, just looking at their injury report, uh, no Najee Murray at defensive back, no Tony Washington on the offensive line, uh, Ahmad Thomas at linebacker, and uh, running back Cameron Artis Payne is a healthy scratch uh, once again this week. Those are the notable players out of the lineup, uh, with Ty Cranston uh, currently set uh, to line up as an op- one of the options at uh, safety, uh, is also questionable this week. So that's the uh, depth charts and injury reports for Ottawa and Montreal. Uh, Looking at the quick injury reports from the other games again later in the week, uh, we don't have the full reports out yet at this point uh, because they are late week games. But uh, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, uh, running back Andrew Harris for the Bombers uh, was limited on Wednesday and uh, did not practice on Thursday with a calf injury. Uh, So we'll continue to monitor and see uh, whether Harris gets his second straight start or whether it's Brady Oliveira uh, in stepping back in. Uh, Darvin Adams limited on Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. I expect we see him back in the lineup again. And, uh, you know, Nick Dembski, he he missed the last game. I, I expected him to, or the last two games, I believe. I expected him to have... Uh, be out a little bit longer with the addition of Naaman Roosevelt, but he was a full participant in practice on Thursday. So could Nick Dembski be ready to go for the Labor Day Classic? We will find out uh, probably later today uh, or early on Saturday. Uh, Drew Wolitarski and Rashid Bailey also limited on Wednesday, but taking full part on Thursday. And uh, those are the notables on offense, I believe, on defense. Uh, Steven Richardson still not practicing. Kyrie Wilson still not practicing. The big pieces there. And uh, Brandon Alexander also not practicing the first two days uh, with a shoulder injury this week. Uh, For the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, uh, notables on the injury report here. Uh, Jordan Williams Lambert left the the Riders previous game before the bye week with an injury. Uh, He was a full participant in Thursday, uh, which... uh, Seems like it'll be on track for him to be back in the lineup coming on Sunday. Uh, That's the notable there. Micah Johnson did not practice on Wednesday, but he was a full participant on Thursday along the the defensive line. And it looks like uh, there's a lot of guys that have been on the injury report that are back this week for the... uh, for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, which uh, which is good to see, guys getting healthy there for them. Uh, other notable uh, guy who's been handling the kick return duties most of the season so far, Marcus Murphy at running back, uh, did not practice the first two days uh, this week with a foot injury. So we'll continue to monitor that and see who gets the return job for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, getting into the Labor Day Monday game, starting with Toronto and Hamilton. Uh, a relatively short uh, injured list for the Argos, who had an extra week off. Uh, they do have a couple players in COVID-19 protocol right now. Uh, so offensive lineman Darius Bladek and Philip Blake did not practice on Thursday. Uh, and also wide receiver Ricky Collins. So uh, I'm not sure what this means at this point for their game status. Uh, that they could just be, you know, a couple negative tests in the next few days and they're cleared to go. Uh, But we'll have to monitor that in the next couple of days. Uh, If you have Ricky Collins slated in your lineup, potentially, as a go-to receiver for the Argos, uh, just be cautious there. And uh, if they're missing two of their top offensive linemen, uh, they're also missing offensive linemen. Jamal Campbell was limited on Thursday. Uh, so, So potentially a few pieces missing there. 
Uh, could hurt the Argos uh, offensively a little bit if they are missing some big pieces on the offensive line. Uh, running back A.J. Olette, who missed last time out with a chest injury, was a full participant in practice. Uh, I would expect after how well he played against the Bombers that D.J. Foster gets the backup job once again this week, but uh, will they try to factor Olette back into the lineup uh, once he is fully healthy and ready to go? It remains to be seen. Uh, those are the notables for the Argos. For the Ticats, uh, going through here, uh, Jagarit Davis was a full participant in practice on Thursday. Uh, he missed last game due to breaking COVID protocols. I assume he will be back in the lineup this week. Uh, also along the defense, uh, Ted Laurent limited in practice. Yonte Evans limited in practice. Uh and Dylan Wynn, uh, limited in practice with calf injury. So a couple of guys along the defensive line there uh, and defensive backfield uh, that uh, are maybe dealing with a couple of tweaks. Uh, Mike Daly as well at defensive back. And on offense for Hamilton, uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli did not practice on Thursday. I would uh, assume we're seeing Dane Evans get the start, uh, looking to get his second straight win at quarterback. Uh, Don Jackson, full participant in practice, uh, but he was listed on the he's listed on the injury report as a healthy scratch. So uh, expect to potentially see him not in the lineup again. Sean Thomas Erlington getting the bulk of the carries as the starter. And uh, something I don't think I've cleared up when talking about the Tie Cats very much this season. I looked into it a little more now. I must have just missed it earlier. Uh, you know, I've been waiting for Braylon Addison, Devere Posey to get back into the lineup. Each and every week, it uh, looks like they are on the six-game injured list for the Thai Cats. So uh, they are likely another couple weeks away. So expect the likes uh, of the receiving core for the Thai Cats to look something like uh, Brandon Banks, Jalen Acklin, Tim White, Stephen Dunbar Jr., uh, and David Unger again this week. We'll have to wait for the exact depth chart, but that's um, I would imagine they roll with the same crew they rolled with at that position last week. Uh, and finally, getting into the Elks and the Stampeders, uh, the one team that has the longest current injury report uh, is the Edmonton Elks uh, coming out of their COVID outbreak. A uh, number of different players, big name players, listed under COVID protocol. Uh, I'll go through them all quickly here. Uh, Jonathan Rose at defensive back, Shai Ross at wide receiver, Darrell Walker at wide receiver, uh, Christian Rector, uh, Tavon Smith at wide receiver, Kwaku Boateng uh, on the defensive line, Aaron Grimes at defensive back, Armonte Edwards at wide receiver, Albert Smalls at defensive back, uh, Keishon Bieria at linebacker, Brandon Pittman at linebacker, and defensive lineman Reggie Howard. Uh, a lot of these guys did not practice uh, this week, and a couple of them were limited. Uh, also, a couple other notable non-COVID protocol injuries. Uh, linebacker Malik Clements, uh, full participant despite a hamstring injury. And defensive lineman Mike Moore, uh, limited with a toe injury. So, how does this affect the fantasy side of things? Well, that's an interesting thing to determine. Uh, will these guys all listed on the protocol, will they be ready to go this week uh, come Monday? Will... They, how is it going to affect their performance? There's a number of big wide receivers on this list. I mean, we're talking about Darrell Walker and Armonte Edwards. Uh, Walker being limited this on Thursday. Uh, Edwards not practicing. He also missed week three uh, with a game. Or sorry, week two, I guess. Three? No, we're in week five. Week three. Yeah, he missed the game in week three uh, due to an injury. And Shai Ross being limited. And Tavon Smith being uh, did not practice. So uh, that's pretty much all of the Elks' uh, main receivers besides Mike Jones and Greg Ellingson. So uh, if some of these guys are not ready to go, I really love the value of those two guys a little bit more. I think they're going to be the ones leaned on, and we'll see some other uh, you know pieces probably come off the practice roster and get into the game for the Elks. But uh, make sure you check those injury reports over the next two or three days as well and the depth chart when it comes out on Sunday to see who is actually playing for the Elks this week. 
Uh, notable also, they will be at without offensive lineman Jacob Ruby, who has been released for breaking COVID protocols and uh, not being clear about his vaccine status to the team. Uh, so losing a big piece on the field at offensive line uh, in the crew that protects Trevor Harris. Uh, for the Calgary Stampeders, uh, I cannot believe it. Just a couple weeks after uh, going on the six-game injured list with a broken fibula, Bo Levi Mitchell back at practice. He was limited on Thursday, but he wasn't looking too bad. He, he looks like he's decently healthy and is ready to go in short time. I'm interested to see, will the Stampeders rush him back from injury to get him back in the lineup? I don't think they should, uh, given how well Jake Mayer has been playing. I would vote for another week for Mayer starting this week. Uh, but again, we'll check those depth charts uh, on Sunday. Uh, I would not be completely shocked if we saw Mitchell either dress as the backup or get into that starting role for the Stampeders, which could really affect your fantasy lineup if you're like me and you're leaning on Mayer getting the start uh, once again for that cheap $7,000 salary. Other notables uh, for the Stampeders, uh, wide receiver Richie Sandani missed the last game with a groin injury. He was a full participant on Thursday uh, and may slot back into his starting role where Colton Hunchak uh, took over for the previous game. Uh, offensive lineman Julian Good-Jones has an ankle injury and did not practice on Thursday. Uh, also offensive lineman Ryan Seaver, Sevier, a uh, foot injury and did not practice. So uh, potentially a couple offensive linemen out this week. And uh, those should be the notable fantasy uh, players on, or fantasy impacts, I would say, on the injury report for the Stampeders and for all the teams around the league. Again, a little bit of a weird week given the you know time difference between all of the games this week. Uh, so I know the info as of right now, you know, it's pretty vague on a lot of these teams, who will play, who will not. Uh, I wanted to get this update out here, so mainly for that Montreal-Ottawa game tonight. Because uh, I think there's a lot of interesting uh, options there. You know, notable no Quan Bray, uh, Devontae Dedman getting a start, uh, Justin Davis getting a second straight start. Those were the key things to note coming into tonight's game. Uh, and I'll try to, you know, have an update on uh, Saturday or Sunday as well uh, to get you uh, more updates once we have the depth charts for those other games. So stay tuned for those. Uh, I will have them right here on the YouTube channel uh, or uh, if, you know, scheduling wise that doesn't fit in because I have a lot of stuff going on this weekend, I will make sure to tweet out any notable updates there as well. So follow me on Twitter at Cooper Trooper 42 to get those updates as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it for your first depth chart update for this week. Uh, do all the YouTube things like comment, subscribe, let me know what you like, what you didn't. Uh, if you have any fantasy questions, put them in the comments section, tweet them at me, always happy to answer them. And uh, if you haven't done so already, go back and check out uh, the previews I have for every position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and defense to help you get set to set those lineups tonight for week number five as it all kicks off. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, good luck with week number five of CFL Fantasy, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.